really interesting fight at 115 pounds as we have Kay Hansen taking on Corey McKenna. This is Corey McKenna's UFC debut after coming in on Contender Series, getting a big win over Vanessa Demopoulos and earning that shot at the big show. And I mean, you might be familiar with her time over in Cage Warriors. You might be familiar with some of the wins that she's been able to rack off. The lone loss to McColl DeSegni that we saw in Contender Series. We've seen with AFL in their Valkyrie Series. And I mean, that one, just a split decision loss. But again, Corey McKenna really stringing things together, made the move from Wales to Team Alpha Male, training with some of the best in the business. And we really stress that. And I know for Corey McKenna, first uh, win as a pro, finish. Then she wins a split. She wins another finish over Fanny Redman, 1-0. She wins another uh, by finish, then comes in on Contender Series, earns the contract. Taking on Kay Hansen, and I mean, Matt, a lot of people were familiar with Kay Hansen from her time in Invicta. She was that fighter that came in. She was 19 years old. She was really going to put a statement on, and she has. I mean, 7 and uh, 3, the total record. Her UFC debut against the former Invicta champ in Jinyu Fry. Huge win for Kay Hansen in that one. And oh. I remember us breaking down that fight. If Fry was going to win, had to establish distance, get her strikes going. Kay Hansen got to push the pressure. And what did she do in that fight? Push the pressure. I'm better. I like this fight, but it seems like a fight that had to happen. Like, it really? seems like this was, like, behind the scenes. We were starting to write a narrative. And this was the storyline that we were ultimately going to get. Can you fill me in there? So, first of all, I would just like to announce something. I believe this is a fight night first. I'm older than both of these fighters. And I never thought I'd actually say that. I'm almost 22, so I think I have them both beat by just a little bit. But besides that, Kay Hansen fought a very similar fighter to Corey McKenna in her last fight. And I like how you prefaced it by that because... Ginny Fry, what does she do well? She's a great striker. She has really good footwork on the outside, but her grappling is a bit of a weakness, and you knew that going into this fight, she was a little bit undersized, because Ginny Fry, phenomenal fighter, should be fighting at 105, though. Kay Hansen, she was, I would say, extremely underdeveloped her first run in Invicta, but then she took a little bit of time off, just really worked on developing her MMA skill set, and really just kind of matured as a person over that time. She's come out and talked a lot about it, and her wrestling and really just her grappling are going to be a problem for a lot of women in this division. Because you have to think, at 21 years of age, she was all ready to submit a former champion in another organization. And say what you want about Invicta, but like, women's MMA doesn't really happen in that many places. And Invicta is one of the better opportunities for a lot of these athletes. So to beat a former champion coming out of there in Ginny Fry, who is one of the more well-known fighters, and I would say kind of a face of the Invicta organization since Cyborg has left, that... That win was huge for me. And Corey McKenna, like you had said, it felt like this fight was going to get put together the second she had won on uh, Contender Series. And I was telling, I had friends over that night because I was really excited for a few of those. And I remember saying that. I was like, oh, she's going to fight Kay Hansen. And no one knew who Kay Hansen was. Then I had to explain that. But it really feels like they're doing one of these prospect versus prospects. And like, oh, whoever wins this is going to be like the next Macy Barber, if you will. Now, hopefully no one tears their ACL in their next fight. But Corey McKenna, I didn't think deserved a UFC contract after her Contender Series fight. I do think that it was more built in as to the narrative that, oh, we're going to have these two really young fighters afterwards fight each other. Because you look at who else got a contract that night. Well, TJ Laramie got one really extensive uh, background on the regionals. I know it didn't exactly go his way in his first fight in the UFC, but TJ Laramie, really high upside to him long term. Let's just focus on Adrian no, Giannis. No. Adrian Giannis is another guy, too. He's being called Tiny Jorge Masvidal for a reason. Not only does he look very similar to him, his striking's absurd, and he's a guy who I do really think can go a long ways in the UFC. So you have those two people getting contracts, and it's like, okay, that's good enough. I know Dana White loves to just give everyone the contracts on that show now, but please stop doing that. It's turned into a poppy mill. Corey McKenna, I didn't think deserved it. I do like this matchup for her in the UFC. I think if you're going to match her up against anyone at this stage in her career, this is the fight to do. I just think Kay Hansen's fought the much higher level of competition. I know she's got two more losses. And if you look, really do a deep dive into your career, maybe you're not happy with a lot of the wins. But you just have to look at what her skill set, skill set is capable of. Well, her skill set's capable of choke, well, beating or submitting a former champion. And that's not something I'm confident saying Corey McKenna could do herself. And I mean, Jinyu Fry was the atomweight champion there. I just want to make that one clear. So, I mean, maybe the step up to straw weight, it was an issue. But... In her, well, her last two fights, even the fight that she had against Loma Lukbunmi, it just didn't work out for her there. So, Jinyu Fry, late in her career too, but still, Kay Hansen putting on very impressive performances. The Corey McKenna uh, fight that she had against Vanessa Demopoulos, definitely a good win. There are a couple of fluky spots. I know back in the first round, she kind of caught her with a bit of a punch. Demopoulos, whether she got hit and rocked or whether she just kind of slipped, she was down. She Corey, rolled for a knee. Corey McKenna has really good top pressure. You saw that throughout that fight. But it wasn't one of those impressive performances where you went, geez, 
that left me with a good taste in my mouth. It was kind of like, hey, Brendan Lochnane didn't get a contract. Chris Curtis didn't get one. But Corey McKenna gets one? But hey, you want to build up the strawweight division. This is definitely a good name to have in Corey McKenna. And I mean, I look at this fight. I look at the odds. Maybe you scratch your head a little bit. I mean, Kay Hansen, uh, open a minus 130. That's where the head scratching starts. And then that line dropped and it's evened out. Uh, Kay Hansen now a minus 222 favorite for Corey McKenna. Open a plus 110. She's now at a plus 180. If we have a look over on Topology, out of the total votes, 423, 79% of Hansen, 66% saying she's going to win by decision. I think Kay Hansen has a very good opportunity in this fight. And I will leave it at that. I think Kay Hansen's going to win and probably by submission. Corey McKenna, if she does incorporate the same style that she used against Demopolis, I'm not saying she will, but if she does go out there expecting to get a lot of top control, really pressure the fight towards Kay Hansen, it's going to be a very different fight. And I do think the same thing can be said for McKenna. It's not like she fought a true strawweight in her last fight. Demopolis is not the biggest fighter you're ever going to see. Very small for the division. So I do think you can take a lot from each competitor's last fight and kind of bring it into this one. But... Kay Hansen, I do think the grappling acumen is going to be a little bit too much for McKenna. I've liked what I've seen from Hansen striking. I do think it's developed a lot in the short amount of time she's had to really work on it. Corey McKenna, I, I will still say, is the better striker out of these two. She does have fairly good boxing and throws good combinations. Which is a huge surprise because honestly, and I'm sure the broadcast will talk about this and I'll have to do my research for question mark kicks on Saturday. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter in the UFC with a reach that's less than 60 inches at 58 and a half inches. That's insane. Now, now, luckily she's fighting someone with a 63 inch reach so it's not like she's fighting slender man on the other side but i do think Kay hansen the grappling should be enough i like her experience against upper le or higher level competition and i do think that it's well to say that i do think fight iq is gonna be the reason that a 21 year old is gonna get the win but we're dealing with two fairly young fighters i just like the upside of Kay hansen a little bit more matt really looking forward to this fight we both have Kay hansen it's an interesting card it's gonna move there's a lot of moving pieces barbara is out against rodriguez rodriguez against tb D. Then you have a main event that's also TBD. Very so upset. keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. Make sure you check in during the week. We're really looking forward to it and we'll have coverage all week long. So as I said, keep it locked in. And Matt, as we always do say with Fight Night Picks, let's, let's get, get into it. it.